Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at the geometry of complex numbers on the Argand plane. So Argand plane is basically a method or a technique used to represent complex numbers on the geometrical plane, right? So for example, like we represent, let's say 5,4 on the coordinate axis. How do you represent a complex number on the, on, on like a system like the axis? Well, that's something called as the Argand plane. And we're going to discuss the geometry of complex numbers on the Argand plane. And yes, let's see how that goes. So this is the problem number six on the Carnegie Mellon Informatics and Mathematics competition, also known as CMIMC in the year 2016. And this is one of the most famous university math tournaments for high school students. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the geometry of complex numbers, basically the representation on the Argon plane and, and, and all sorts of those things. And before that, I'm also going to give you a little bit of a brief introduction about complex numbers, what's the argument and the modulus of complex numbers. We are going to be looking at how geometrically some changes occur when you multiply by a complex number. So let's say you have a quantity when you multiply it by complex numbers, what geometrical changes really happen and how do you plot them on the argon plane? We're going to be talking about that. And after that, we have some book sessions for senior math Olympiads and at the end, a similar one charging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so let's see what they're telling us. Uh, suppose omega is a complex number. That's the symbol for a complex number, okay, C. And lambda is a real number belonging from one to infinity such that omega omega squared and lambda omega form an equilateral triangle. So what they don't tell us is that if you maybe plot this omega omega squared and lambda omega on the argon plane, you obtain an equilateral triangle as these, these three points are the vertices basically. Now find lambda of omega or essentially lambda as a function of omega, right? Given that omega is not equal to zero. So effectively at the end of it all, we need to find lambda as a function of omega. So now let's just first talk about the complex numbers a little bit. So any complex number in general, Z, can be represented as X plus IY, where the real component of Z is X and the imaginary component of Z is Y. Similarly, we have a quantity called as the modulus of a particular complex number. And we represent it like this. We add the complex number Z and put like two bars around it, modulus of complex number. And that is defined as the square root of X squared plus y square, right? And obviously I think it's worth mentioning that x comma y are real numbers, okay? Great, and there's another thing called the argument of the complex numbers, so argument of z, which is nothing but the tan inverse of y by x, right? Um, that's great, but how? What, what geometrical sense does this make? So now the way of representing a complex number, so for example, let's just consider our normal you know, 2D plane. And if I want to represent a point, let's say 4, 5 over here, I can easily represent it. Let's say this is x equal to 4, this is y equal to 5, but then this automatically becomes 4, 5. Okay, great. How do I represent maybe 4 plus 5i? Now that becomes a complex number, right? So the representation of the complex number on, let's say, two axes is what we call as the argon plane. And you can obviously extend this into negatives as well. So this is what we call the real axis. And this is what we call as the complex axis or the imaginary axis. So basically four plus five, so this would be four. This would be, let's say five I and, or I can just write five cause I'm defining it as IR. And this would be obviously Z is equal to four plus five I, this point Z. And the distance from the origin to Z would be called as modulus of Z, right? And obviously this is X, this entire thing, this height is Y. So I think by the Pythagorean theorem, it's clear to see that model of Z whole square is equal to X square plus Y square. In other words, the modulus of C is nothing but the root of X square plus Y square. And since Z, uh, the, the, the distance, modulus is a distance, we always consider positive. Okay, great. Now what's the argument? So the argument is essentially the angle measured from the positive direction of the real axis. So this is the positive direction of the real axis over here, right? And the angle we measured in anti-clockwise direction. So if this angle is, let's say, theta, the tangent of theta 
will obviously be y by x because it's just from trigonometry so theta then becomes tan inverse y by x which is called the argument of the complex number z which we have represented over here on the argon plane so that was like a little bit of an introduction about how we can maybe use uh, or rather how we can maybe plot complex numbers on the argon plane now coming back to the question they are telling us that omega omega square and lambda omega form an equilateral triangle so basically i need to form them on the argon plane right i need to draw a diagram of sorts again this is the real axis this is the complex axis and let's just say this is our point omega where will be lambda times omega now lambda times omega will be nothing but on the on the same line right it might be forward or behind depending upon what the sign of this lambda is all we really know is that lambda is a positive quantity or in fact because we know that it's positive it will be ahead of omega right because they have i think said that lambda is positive right it's from 1 to infinity that's great so now we know the exact position of lambda okay great now where will omega squared be now i think before you kind of like guess where omega squared will be plotted i should probably say that if the argument of omega is theta then that essentially implies that the argument of omega squared will be 2 theta i think this is something that you should try proving yourself regardless of that omega squared would be something over here at an angle of essentially 2 theta right omega squared and then these three quantities would form an equilateral triangle like this right okay great so th they're simply form an equilateral triangle all sides equal all angles 60 degree okay great how can we maybe simplify this a little bit so till now we have just plotted them on the argon plane that's all that we've really done in the solution and now we essentially need to move forward we need to simplify our work a little bit what i see is that i have this omega everywhere right i have this omega everywhere omega squared omega and lambda omega so maybe we can reduce one of the omegas it would be easier right and the best way to do that is multiply by one by omega right so if i multiply this one by omega what will i get right what will i get and how to determine what you will get so this is where the rule of multiplication by complex numbers comes in okay so multiplication by a complex number z so what happens when you multiply by complex number z what geometrical changes happen right first thing that happens is is that it changes the distance by modulus of z and the second thing that happens is that it changes the angle by argument of z and those are essentially the geometrical changes that happen when you multiply by complex number z so it depends on z on the number that you're multiplying it right so how can i maybe multiply by 1 by omega so omega times 1 by omega is obviously 1 lambda times omega times 1 by omega is lambda so these both get reduced onto the real axis the purely real axis so this just becomes 1 and this just becomes lambda right those two points and the third point was omega squared effectively what i'm trying to say is that this omega becomes 1 when you multiply it by 1 by omega and this lambda times omega becomes lambda when you multiply it by 1 by omega what happens to this omega square it obviously becomes omega right and that is it this is the equilateral triangle that will hence be formed right so it changes the angle with the argument of z and it changes distance by modulus of z okay great what next maybe let's draw a little bit better diagram of this so we have the real axis and the complex axis and then we have this thing over here we have this one over here we have this lambda over here this omega over here let me just maybe draw the perpendicular and because an equilateral triangle we know that this will be equal to this now what's the side so the side length will obviously be lambda minus one right so all of the sides will effectively be lambda minus one this will be the height right and this one one is the coordinate right you can write this as one comma zero similarly this lambda is the coordinate lambda comma zero what will be the coordinate of this midpoint it will obviously be lambda plus one by two right using the midpoint theorem in coordinate geometry 
And the coordinate of this will be lambda plus 1 by 2. Okay, great. So now, now how can we proceed with this? So now maybe we can use some trigonometry. I know that this angle is 60 degree, right? So if I can maybe just write the sine of that, sine 60 would be nothing but the perpendicular to the hypotenuse, right? Lambda minus 1. And sine 60 is root 3 by 2, which is h by lambda minus 1. So I have known h as a function of lambda, root 3 by 2 times lambda minus 1. And that's great because that significantly reduces the problems that I have. Now, if you actually notice, right? If you actually notice, what is this distance? This, this is nothing but the modulus of omega, right? Like I was saying for the modulus of z, this is just the modulus of omega, distance from the origin to the complex number omega. And if I maybe use the Pythagorean theorem now, I can potentially find out my answer. So let me just maybe label the points. If I call this as point number A, if I call this as point number B, and if I call this as point number C. So in triangle ABC, if I try and use the Pythagoras theorem, so the triangle ABC is kind of like the big triangle over here. So I'll get omega squared or the modulus of omega squared will be equal to h squared plus lambda plus 1 by 2 whole square. Just to kind of remind you again, this lambda plus 1 by 2 is not the distance, it is the coordinate. So coordinate is obviously from the origin. So the origin to this point is the distance would obviously be lambda plus 1 by 2. Great. So now, h was nothing but root 3 by 2 times lambda minus 1. And if I just plug that in over here, I'll get omega squared is equal to 3 by 4 times lambda minus 1 whole square plus 1 by 4 times lambda plus 1 whole square. And after this, it's just a matter of simplification. Lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1 plus 1 by 4 times lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1. So omega squared then just becomes 1 by 4 of 3 lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 3 plus lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1. So omega squared very conveniently becomes 4 lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4, I believe, right? Yep. So we have 4 omega squared is equal to 4 lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4. And instead of maybe cancelling this out, I need to find lambda as a function of omega. I need to find lambda as a function of omega. Right, so I need to isolate lambda in a way. And the way to isolate lambda would be completing the squares. So 4 lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 1 plus 3. Kind of like split it like that. So this just become 4 omega square minus 3 is equal to 2 lambda minus 1 whole squared. I think now you kind of see how it works. But 2 lambda minus 1 is obviously plus of minus square root of 4 omega square minus 3. So lambda then becomes 1 plus of minus square root of 4 omega square minus 3 divided by 2. But they've said that lambda belongs to 1 to infinity in the question statement itself. So lambda needs to be positive. So we ignore the negative sign and lambda will simply be 1 plus square root of 4 omega square minus 3 by 2. So therefore, we isolated lambda and found lambda as a function of omega. So yes, that was quite an interesting problem. And really, the only interesting thing uh, or the only critical thing over here was this multiplication by this omega. And after that, it was just basic geometry that we used over here. So yes, I hope you like that introduction to the argon plane. And I'll be covering more questions on complex numbers in the future. So let's get moving. Okay, so you have certain book sessions for Senior Math Olympiads, IMO Compendium, Paul Lomez by Barbeu, Elementary Number Theory by Siapinski, Graph Theory by Harari, Combinatics by Brualdi, Secrets and Inequalities, and of course, Functional Equations and How to Solve Them by Christopher G. Small. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. And we need to prove that for natural number n, there exists this set of complex numbers on the unit circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, such that they satisfy this given condition, right? The summation of omega j is equal to the summation of omega j squared from j is equal to 1 to n in both cases. And that in turn is equal to n minus 1. And we need to prove that it holds if and only if n is equal to 2. So this essentially only and only holds for n is equal to 2 and no other natural number n. And that is the problem. So maybe try it out. And if you're able to make any progress on it, let me know in the comment section. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized 
with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.